this evening, Karen, one of you here this evening on the seventh Sunday of Easter, and also our sixth grade at graduation. Uh, we begin our worship by singing our opening hymn, 644, The Church's One Foundation.
psalm of the day is Psalm 133, which you can find in the front part of your hymnals. Remember, there are no page numbers. The psalms are simply in numerical order. And we read responsively Psalm 133, half verse by half verse. That means I read up to the right asterisk, and you respond with the rest of the verse. Psalm 133. children forward for a special message. Good evening, boys and girls. Good evening. That's it. All of you here. That's it. Let's try this again. Good evening. Good evening. Wow, that's not it. We've got like half as many people as this side. They're way louder. All right. Let me ask you a question. If you were writing to the country and you made a mistake, what would you do to get rid of the mistake? Erase it. Use an eraser. All right. All right. This one might be tough. If you were playing outside with a nice, clean, white shirt on, and you started rolling around in the mud, you got it filthy. What might your parent use to get rid of the dirt off that white shirt? Bleach. Bleach. That is right. Wow. You guys are. All right, let's say you were helping mom or dad paint a wall and you painted the wrong spot. What might you use to undo your mistake? Okay. Stop, this one. Oh, Michael? Maybe. If you were coloring a picture with markers, and you got markers all over your hands, how would you clean up your hands? Soap and water. Yes, wash the markers over the hands. All right. Now, if you were to lie, cheat, steal, hit someone, Get rid of that mistake in class. <laughs> Ask you who? God? Yeah. We would wash it away with the blood of Jesus. The blood that was shed on the cross of you. Because this is why Jesus came into your world. So that he can wash away all your mistakes and sins. And with those taken away, then you get to stand before God. One day, you get to live in this perfect city. Lord God, we make many mistakes. Thank you for the ability to cancel them out, erase them, and watch them away. But most importantly, thank you for sending Jesus to take away our sins so that we can live with you. In his name we pray. Alright, thank you guys for returning to your seat. We can see our version.
The apostles were very deliberate in their choosing. Then they trust the Lord's providence at the end. We read. Then they returned to Jerusalem, to the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room, where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brother. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scriptures had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man fought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bottles gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem that the field was called in their own language, the Pelgamum, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Saul, May his camp become festive, and let there be no one to dwell in, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up with us, one of these men must become of us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward to Joseph, called Barsabas, who was also called Justice. And, and they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas took aside to go to his own place. They cast lots with them, and the lot fell on the fire, and he was numbered with the fire. O Lord, have mercy on us. Our epistle comes to us from the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 1 through 20, on page 13, verse 6. And in this reading, we get a final glimpse of the new Jerusalem. And we're reminded that we will enter this perfect city because of our Alpha and Omega, Christ. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the land, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. No longer will there be anything in her, but the throne of God and of the land be and it serves the worship. They will see his face, and his name will be on their forehead, and night will be no more. They will need no light of land or sun. The Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever. And he said to them, These words are trustworthy. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophets to his I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship them. He said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you, and your brothers, the prophets, and the those who keep the words of this book. Worship the God. And he said, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is near. But the evildoers still be evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still be right, and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon. Bringing my recompense with me to repay everyone for what we And the Alpha be made, the first and the last, beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices also. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things in the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. And let the one who is thirsty, Come. 
Let the one who desires take the water of life without them. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues of Scrabble's And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described as He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter, verses 20 through 26, on page 11, 27. And our gospel reading is part of what is known as Jesus' high priestly prayer. In this prayer, Jesus prays for you. Notice what he prays for when he prays for you. Jesus prays. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who have believed in me through their work. But they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. They may also be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly, so that the world may know that you sent me, and love them, even as you love them. Father, I desire that they also, that you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory, you have given me, because you love me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I have made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I. O Lord, have mercy on us. We turn to page 230 for the common response. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name, that I may walk in your truth. sense to have this chapter be read for your sixth grade graduation. But it's not just an ending. With each beginning, we begin with Christ. We get to soon begin our summer, and we begin it with Christ. Each school here at Trinity 
We begin this school year with a chapel service. We begin in Christ. And on Friday, we're going to end our school year with a final chapel service. Our beginning and our end is in Christ. He truly is your Alpha and Omega. And that's probably the most important part of your education here at Trinity that we want you to take with you. That Jesus is your beginning and your end. But he's also with you everywhere you go. This is the same Jesus who laid down his life for you and then rose from the dead. He did what he needed to do in order to be your Lord and Savior. To be your Alpha and Omega. To be the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and sits on the throne of God. He's your loving Lord who can guide you throughout your life. And then when you get to that ultimate day, that time when even this world ends, you will still have Jesus. And he will literally be all of you. Let's be honest. It sure doesn't look like this world is worth it. Your parents sitting with you are probably, once again, a little more nervous for your well-being and safety after yesterday's news. Not that they really needed any encouragement to be worried or nervous about you and your future. But more and more things in this world seem to be a curse. But if we look carefully at Revelation 22, in the heavenly news city, the new Jerusalem, with the river of life flowing from the throne of God. There's a line that is absolutely clear. No longer will there be anything of Christ. What does that mean? Well, almost anything that gives you worry or makes you wonder about your future is probably a curse. In the words of our text, would be an evildoer, the filthy, the dogs and sorcerers, the sexually immoral, murderers, idolaters, and lovers and practitioners of falsehood. It is sin, death, the devil, the world, temptation, pain, sickness, hurt feelings, abandonment, abuse, assault, fights, destruction, bullies and bullying, murder, racism, injury, accident, destruction, war, hatred, anger, forgetfulness, false promises, enemies, viruses, scams, incompetence, broken relationships, greed, pride, laziness, aging, loneliness, secrets, fear, immorality, sexism, stealing, skipping, Mind. Skipping responsibility, I should say. Selfishness. And the list can continue on and Without all that junk, without that stuff that makes you feel, without all those stains on your garments, what a glorious place that you choose to be. It will be perfect. It'll be paradise restored. We will live the way God always intended for you to live. But just think how free and awesome life will be when all those things are gone for you. It will be magnificent. Why have you made a big deal about the river of life and the throne of God and the tree of life and its fruit? Or in chapter 21, it talks about how it will have gold roads and pearl gates. The beauty and majesty of this perfect city will take your breath away. I don't think any of it can compare with that one. No longer will there be anything occurs. But if nothing occurs, can ever live. It doesn't go to reason. How will I be in that purpose? With that exhaustive list of, of accursed things, it's easy to point out who is 
the bully? Who's the liar? Who's the murderer? Who is prideful? Who is the lazy one? Or too quick to anger? Or too quick to point a finger at something? But the question we truly need to ask is how do I contribute to the person of this? And when we consider that question, it starts to make us a little nervous. It should make you wiggle in your seat. And it's not just because of all that stuff of the world out there, but because you and I do a cursing thing. These cues have, have people full of them, of people who have made it. Of people who have believed the lies of this world, who have imposed their sinful will on others. And if this is true, then how can we ever be found in this perfect, this beautiful paradise of perfect peace? A place that life itself almost can't be found. How can I, how can you end up in this perfect place? Now the answer to that question is what the school and church call it. In fact, that question is what this chapter is about. And I would say the entire Bible is about the answer to that question. How can I be in God's perfect place for his creation? How can I be in the new Jerusalem, the new heaven, and the new world? And our text tells us, Blessed are those who wash their robes, so they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter this city by the way. Oh, check this out. If you wash your clothes, oh, mom and dad are like, all right, you hear that, honey? Start washing your clothes. But if you wash your clothes, it says, sounds easy enough. So what? And it's what the church is. Well, first off, the clothes aren't just any clothes you wear, but rather the clothes clothes of Christ, the robes of Christ, the righteousness of Christ that he gave to you in your baptism and through your faith in him. Those holy clothes of that Christian life that you have that are pure, white, perfect, clean as a whistle. Until you participate in the world's symptoms. Until you sin and get crumbs all over yourself. Until you bully, lie, cheat, and on and on it goes. Your clothes from Christ were perfectly clean until you made a big mess of them. And those spiritual clothes, they stained. And so now this leads us to the question of what detergent do I use? Tie, all, game, no earthly soap is going to do Rather, you need something very special. Something very valuable. You need to make your clothes clean in the blood of the Lord. In the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. How does that happen? By repenting. Confessing your sins to God and receiving His forgiveness. The only way to remove that stain is to find forgiveness in Jesus' cross. To be reminded that Jesus truly did shed his blood on the cross for you. That Jesus is your Lamb of God who takes away your sin. The Lamb that will be sitting on the throne of God. He came to take away your offerings. He came to make your clothes purely clean. And with that washing of your spiritual clothes, in Christ's blood, you will one day find yourself walking through those early gates into eternal paradise forever. And it's my fervent prayer that the four
you will walk into that paradise. And I pray that the four of you will even get to walk together to the cloud. continue our worship by singing our next hymn, 556, the first five verses, Dear Christians, One and All.
please be seated. And I'll invite Mr. Mopskis forward, and uh, Jeremy, and anyone else that's supposed to come up here from the board of that. And, and we invite uh, now Cadence, you can come up, and Jackie, and Melanie, and Grace. I just have a few things that I've, I've written down about these girls. Uh, when, when I first thought about this class, it's four girls in a class and me. It's kind of like a sitcom. And knowing their personalities, it's, it's quite an interesting mix. Uh, we have Melanie. Raise your hand, Melanie. Yeah creates a new dance at the end of every school day. <laughs> Don't know why she does it, though. Um, she also, uh, if this would be a sitcom, one of the best episodes ever would be the time she got locked in the library and couldn't escape. We had to break the door in order to get her out. Um, Cadence, the artistic one, but, you know, She'll be silly all day long, then all of a sudden, with Mr. M, that's not the way we do it. And she's, she's the serious mother type up there. Uh, we have Jackie. Who's she just proves my point. Very quiet. Uh, and it's really funny, though, because when she does talk, I've never learned until about halfway through this school year, she has a proper British accent. That's the only way that she would talk for the rest of the school year. Um, then we have, but, but the thing is, her influence on the class is great. Very great. Uh, then we have Grace. Raise your hand, Grace. Right there's Grace. You're the last one there, right? She takes everything so seriously, as you can see right now. She takes everything so seriously. And it, it, it's difficult for her to she does things beautifully. She, she does her math. You know, she can't wait to be the first one done with math because we have a little contest with the daily lesson. And she's the one who's going to be the first one to push the, push the uh, M&M dispenser so that she can get the M&Ms because she's done first because she knows her work, she gets it done. She has a confidence that she doesn't know about yet. I think it's building. Throughout the year, these girls have grown a great deal. Um, they've had jobs being students, they've done great jobs, not only just as students, but helping each other out through the school year, doing things like cleaning around the school, they handle flags. They help with the other children. They do a marvelous job with all the younger children. Uh, Pastor mentioned about uh, chapel before. Y yeah, they're not great for volunteers for chapel. I ask them a lot, and they sit over here. And a lot of the younger kids sit over here. This side is always raising hands for volunteers. This side, no hands for volunteers. But. When I do call on them, because I, I inevitably will call on them, they, they do a good job for it. You guys are the leaders in the school. See? Yeah. Cadence agrees. You guys are the leaders in the school. You do have great influence of what happens here at this school. And I know all of them have expressed concern about going on to the bigger school next year. I am not worried about you guys. You guys will handle it well. What's my favorite uh, Bible chapter? Come on. Forget it, they're going to have a hard time in school. 
What? Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Thank you very much. Of course, Cadence. Um, Matthew 6, which I have always called the Why Worry chapter, because it's about God taking care of us. He cares for us more than anything. And God will take care of them as they go through their life. So guys, I'm proud of you. You did a great job. Um, just to prove how much I care for you, and I love you guys, right now the St. Louis Blues are playing in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and I'm here. Okay? So you better appreciate this. All right? Okay. I think they're losing, though. So. All right. Shall we award the diplomas? Uh, Melanie Becker. Graciello. Graciella Flippo. Cadence Walsh Stanley. Congratulations to the class of 2022. They've, they've gone through a lot because last couple of years, as everybody knows, been a really tough year, a lot online, a lot of weird situations in the classroom. So congratulations, girls. All right, take out your insert. Turn to the part that says Canticle in your hymnal. Turn to hymn number 933 and please stand. Let my prayer rise before you as incense.
here for offering. We turn to page 233 for the order of prayer. In our prayers this morning, remember those listed in our bulletins. We also pray for the victims of the uh, shooting yesterday in Texas. Please stand for prayer. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh righteous Father, your Son obeyed your will for the sake of our salvation. Through your Spirit, give your church on earth unity of faith, that the world may know that you sent your Son to rescue us from sin, death, and the devil. Lord, in your mercy. Our refuge and strength. We feel powerless in the horrific images of the school shooting in Texas. Comfort the grieving, heal the hurting, and be a very present help in times of trouble. Move us to have open eyes, open ears, and open hearts for those who are silent and marginalized in our world. Raise us up to see, hear, and act in the lives of those suffering mentally and spiritually who might otherwise strike out in violence and evil. Lead us to be champions of every life that you have entrusted to us. Use us as instruments of your grace. While we will have tribulation in this world, we know that you are with us. You never abandon nor forsake. Lead us to reflect your image actively in this world so that all may know that you have come in the person and work of your Son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us from this helplessness and hopelessness. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you have instituted holy baptism as a saving flood, a washing of rebirth and renewal. Grant that many would be washed in the river that flows from the heavenly city and be brought through her gates into your eternal church. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the church, you have sustained your people through the ages by the apostles' witness to the death and resurrection of your Son. Raise up from among us faithful pastors in every age. Keep our missionaries, pastors, overseers, and teachers faithful to you in all things. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you have placed us in communities and families where we are nurtured and grow in the knowledge of your word and love of you. 
May Trinity Lutheran School faithfully teach your word to our children and those not yet of the kingdom. Bless especially our graduates, Melanie, Jackie, Graciela, and Cadence. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you bestowed upon this nation. Grant us a long memory to recall those who gave the full measure devotion to our country's peace and security. Guide our Supreme Court to bring a judgment of life in the coming weeks. Bring, bring to mind the sacrifice of those who serve faithfully until death in the protection of our freedoms and the defense of our land. And we especially pray for your intervention for the people in Ukraine torn apart by war. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Lord, you have seated Christ at your right hand for our deliverance. Remember all who are afflicted with illness and injury, including Deb, Marcy, Myron, Larry, Matt, Jerry, Helen, Eileen, Carol, Elizabeth, Chrissy, Ken, Shirley, Bridge, and Iona. Give them health and strength according to your will. Sustain them in faith, knowing that for Jesus' sake you will raise them in glory on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we remain standing for our closing hymn, the conclusion of hymn 556, Dear Christians, one and all, rejoice.
Please be seated. Well, it's good to see everyone, every, each and one of you that here this evening as we gather around at God's Word. And congratulations to our sixth graders on graduating here at Trinity. I'd like to say you join a very exclusive group. Okay, so, uh, so we're very proud of, of each of you and all the work that you've done uh, these past few years here at Trinity. And we'll continue to pray for you for the years to come. Um, there is cake. Right? Mrs. Jonas did disappear on me. She's down by the cake. So what do you want me to say? Okay. So sixth grade girls, come on up here. Oh, Melanie, I live for that look. I live for it. All right, so while they walk up here, I don't know who's taking pictures. Come on up here for pictures. We'll conclude the Bible verse of the month. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. God's blessings to each of you this week. We'll let them take their pictures. And then you can wait, and then they'll greet you in back with me, all right? Deal? Sure. Right now. Right now. Come on, right now. Come here, Gracie. Come on, Gracie. I love the chills look at that right there. 